This is Gertrude Mache, and I'm here in Wellington, New Zealand. Dr. Shelley Hipsky, my dear friend and mentor there in the United States, is going to tell you a little bit about my journey as a female entrepreneur and as a humanitarian in Africa. Enjoy. Inspiration is just a story away. Welcome to Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley. I'm your host, Dr. Shelley Hipsky. All of our guests have conquered obstacles, risen above adversity, and have gone on to help others. Today's show involves a story that spans from New Zealand all the way to Africa. The, that young woman who opened the program has inspired lives around the globe. She's a successful educator, author, and humanitarian. I actually met her through social media, and an amazing connection was formed. Until now, many of our meetings have been over Skype, but this fall, she will be with me at Robert Morris University as our international Rooney Scholar. Please welcome today's special guest, Gertrud Matisse. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to be here, Shelley. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just thrilled. So we, we do have quite a friendship, don't we? <laughs> do. <laughs> Virtual so, one most so, of the time. So you're here, absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to start way, way back. I want you to tell me about your childhood in Africa. Well, I was born in Zimbabwe, as you know. I'm mm -hmm. from Southern Africa. Lived there most of my life um, until I was about 19. Then I decided to go overseas to go and study in London yes. to do my first degree. That trip took me all the way to Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, before I went back to Zimbabwe to get married and settle down. And then as life would have it, when all the political trouble started in Zimbabwe in 2001, we had to find a safe country to immigrate to. Yeah. So we made a decision to come here, <coughs> to America. And I was actually coming to New York in August 2001 and missed a flight because of a small misprint on my daughter's visa. Mm -hmm. So the US Embassy misprinted the passport number on the visa sticker. Okay. And we were sent back to Zimbabwe. We were in transit in South Africa mm -hmm. at the time. And when I went back to the US Embassy, they had changed all their rules because so many Zimbabweans were leaving because of the political trouble. And we were told to come back with a bank statement with $6 million, which we didn't have. <laughs> yeah, who would? <laughs> They refused to correct an error that they had made, but if I had got on that flight, I wouldn't be talking to you today because the building where I was going to work went down on September 11. Oh my gosh, gotcha. I was only spending two weeks in New York. My end destination was New Orleans. I had paid a deposit to rent a house in New Orleans that disappeared two years later with Hurricane Katrina. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Wow. So I ended up in New Zealand, and life has been magical from the day that I landed in that country. It's amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Now I and and I know that you've been so deeply affected by so so many different things. I mean, I didn't even know about the September <laughs> 11 stuff, but um, the the AIDS epidemic has definitely kind of weighed on your heart. Can you speak to that? It has. It was Christmas 2004. My parents had come to New Zealand for the first time. We were having Christmas lunch. And one of my girlfriends called and said, Gertrude, switch on the TV, Oprah's in South Africa. And she had 50,000 orphans on a soccer field for Christmas. And that show made me remember what I'd left behind. Mm. I sat with my mom, and we did a head count of the number of orphaned children on my side of the family. So my grandmother had 11 children. Mm -hmm. She had 34 grandchildren, and 19 of us have died from AIDS. Mm. So we did a head count of the kids, and we've got 49 AIDS orphans on my side of the family alone. I called my mother-in-law, did a head count on my husband's side, and found we've got 89 kids. So that's really what got me to finish writing my book. I wrote my book in two months. It is my spiritual memoir, as mm -hmm. you know. It's called Born on the Continent. Ubuntu is mm -hmm. the subtitle. And I wanted to share the Ubuntu philosophy, which basically in Zulu literally translated means a person is only a person through other people. Mm -hmm. So oh, I couldn't be that. human <laughs> <laughs> unless you were human acknowledging my humanity and vice versa. And that became my message. 
through the book, I got a lot of speaking opportunities. Um, so I sell the book to raise money for school fees, mm -hmm. for food, for medication, for clothing for the children. And in the last seven years, it has taken on a life of its own. And I created the Africa Alive Education Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we now look after 360 kids wow. in my husband's home village. So mm -hmm. it's been really good. And I could only do that from where I am yeah. in New Zealand. If I was in Africa, I couldn't even feed my own kids. So Absolutely. I feel really blessed to have this opportunity. Well, let's talk about that. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to look at... Oh, like when you went to New Zealand, I know that you had to kind of rely on the kindness of strangers there. What, what happened then? <sighs> New Zealand is a very unique place. Mm -hmm. I've lived all over the world, Shelley, mm -hmm. but Kiwis are welcoming of outsiders like nowhere else in the world. Yes. I remember landing in Wellington with a small suitcase, three kids, <laughs> no work. Wow. <laughs> we didn't even have enough money for my husband's air ticket. Mm. And the first house that I rented, my neighbors just came and knocked on the door and asked me what I needed. And somebody would walk down the street with a bed or a couch or a chair or so pots or pans. Yeah. And literally by the end of the first week, I had a fully furnished house. So it's, I've been in an environment that's very nurturing. Um, the people there are amazing. Absolutely that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. I know you have a special connection with Denzel Washington, <laughs> which I've got my audience is like, ooh, what, what about Denzel? <laughs> Tell me about Denzel and how that connection came to be. We only have uh, about a minute before break. Okay, I first met him when I was 19. They filmed a movie called Cry Freedom. Okay. It was filmed in Zimbabwe because of apartheid. They could not film in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I used to belong to a small theater group and I got a small walk-on, walk-off part in the film. Awesome. So I got to meet him before he was really famous. Yeah. And he would talk to me every day. And if we fast track a year later, I got to meet him again in 2009. Mm -hmm. He came to New Zealand mm -hmm. to film a movie pilot. And because there's very few Africans in Wellington, I had created a casting agency for movies like King Kong and Avatar. So whenever they look for people of ethnic origin, they come yes. to me. And we get to act in all these amazing films, not big parts, but we're there. Right. And he was filming this pilot. He picks my son, and I got to meet him again 23 years later in New Zealand. That's amazing. So it's been amazing. It yeah. is incredible. Okay, after this short break, Gertrude will be back to talk to us about the Africa Alive Education Foundation. And you may be surprised to learn that you can use skills that you already have to help the people of Africa. You could be helping children one week and then enjoying a once-in-a-lifetime animal safari the next. Stay with us tonight and learn how. This is Dr. Shelley from Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley, and I'm here with Adam LaDolce, and we are in Philadelphia, and he's like this very young, hip person who goes <laughs> on to college campuses and, and talks, so I'd like to know, what's inspiring you? Sure. So I'm a dating coach, and I work with mostly men, and our weekend intensives are us actually going out together. Yes, I get paid to go out with men, and we go out and party and get over our fears. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> of approaching women and feeling really comfortable doing that. So I'd say what inspires me most is when I'm working with a client and he's so nervous, like he's shaking and you know, every part of his body is just telling him, don't do this. And finally he's like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it, overcomes that fear and talks to that girl. And her, her face lightens up and she's so happy to hear him and then there's that connection. And I feel like it's that moment when he comes back and he's so excited, he's got his first phone number ever. And uh, I mean, there's nothing more inspiring than that. Just this guy coming back and all of his fears were totally irrational. And he realizes, why was I so scared? Remember, we wanna know what's inspiring you. So be sure to go to inspiringlivesinternational.com and tell us your story. It's my pleasure to welcome back my friend, Getrid Mache, who's here from New Zealand. She's about to tell us about a fabulous organization helping the women and children of Africa. 
So welcome back, Gertrude. Thank you. It's a delight to have you here on the States Thanks and to be on my show, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so back when we met, we started working with Tori and Betsy Burak out of Los Angeles. And they were doing the, the Love My Whoobies blankets. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were both enamored with this thought because um, I was able to take the, the blankets to the homeless shelters here in Pittsburgh. They took them there in um, LA. And then, of course, you went global. Can yeah. you talk a little about that? Oh, it was fascinating. I, um, I had 40 blankets to give away. So awesome. And we went from village to village, just stopping women in the streets who were holding babies Aww. and handing out these amazing blankets. And you remember I got the orange ones? Yes. They were so bright and so vibrant. And in every single place I went, I mean, I went to the orphanage as well in Bulawayo that I support gave out blankets there. We went to the Victoria Falls. There were two orphanages in Vic Falls where we gave them away. So the Wooby blanket ended up in Africa. That's it's, fantastic. It's awesome. Let's take a peek at the picture there. Oh, so there <laughs> I am <laughs> with a beautiful baby here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who got a blanket in one of the transitional housing areas and there was Gertrude in Africa so we really we've done some fun global things to help other people together <laughs> um, can you tell us about the Africa Alive ambassadors that sounds so so neat I want to check it out <laughs> well it's been an interesting seven years Shelley I had to be really creative about raising money for the kids mm -hmm. and my first ambassadors were three friends okay. uh, Lena Long is from Auckland in New Zealand I had Raywan Weller, who's also from New Zealand, from Tauranga. I had another lady from the South Island who came with me on a trip to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And I challenged these three women to raise $10,000 to come on the trip. Okay. $5,000 would cover their flight, their accommodation, food, transport, and $5,000 would go to the foundation. And it was amazing what we did with the first trip. We literally transformed a school that was dilapidated and condemned. Um, and we came back, we created a 10-day miracle. And since then, I've been taking other groups to Zimbabwe. So people come, they, it's really symbiotic tourism mm -hmm. where I'm trying to find out what you do well and get you to impart your knowledge and your skills. I love it. So you run workshops with the community or you can work with the children. We've got several projects that are women related or male related or both. So it's a life-changing trip, and we spent 10 days in a community with no electricity, no running water. It's Ooh. a fear factor <laughs> experience. And then the last five days of our trip, we go to the Victoria Falls. Wonderful. And we bungee jump off the Victoria Falls Bridge. You oh go whitewater God. rafting. You go for a walk in the bush with a pride of lions. Wait, let's, let's <laughs> see if we can get to those pictures because I know that we have pictures of the, the children and the kids. Oh, there you are on an elephant. Yes. Look at that. Check you out. <laughs> I cannot sit here and say, whoa, whoa, what's up? Oh, man, it is the most humbling <laughs> thing I have ever done. I, I can't it's imagine awesome. actually petting. That's, that's not a little yeah. um, tabby cat. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you match up people with their skill sets so that they are really in the, that sweet spot of something that they love to do? Because I, that's how I am with my Inspiring Lives team. Yeah. I love to figure out what makes them tick yeah. and put them in there. It's all about tapping into people's strengths mm -hmm. and finding out what they do best yes. and what they love to do. Absolutely. And when you're playing in your area of strength and it's not work. Yeah. It's fun. It's, all, it's about having fun. Exactly. And that's what these trips do. People come and they share their skills and it's transforming not just for them. They impact on generations to come that's in fantastic. terms of the community that we're working with in Zimbabwe. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, you know, my family, I know that one of the reasons that we really sort of bonded was that, that my family's done a lot of um, work volunteer work for yeah. people with AIDS, particularly my mother. She's really reached out over the years for, for decades, you know, since since the epidemic came to, to this country. And she, you know, nurtures people through through AIDS. I can only imagine you're my friend and, and I, I I think, you know, you you work with, you know, these babies and, <laughs> and they have AIDS and I, I don't know how you can continuously go back and how do you how do you heal your heart how do you do it get hurt i have to do the work i ca sometimes think how lucky i am to have escaped this pandemic yeah. and when i work with the kids 
I imagine that they're my kids. Yeah. They could be one of my babies. Yeah. And that's the point that I stand from. And it's really sad because sometimes you come back from a trip and one of the babies has died and I have to take a deep breath and just remind myself that I have to keep going. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm there. Yeah. And I stand as their mom. You really do. It's mm -hmm. amazing to me. And so it's a beautiful testimony of, of your strength and, and your hope for all of Africa and, and the world. And that's just so beautiful. And I, and I, I just I want to thank my friend. <laughs> I want to thank you for that. Thank you. You're doing fantastic work. Thanks, Jenny. You really are. Whew, okay. <laughs> Up next, Jennifer Hain joins us with this week's gratitude giving segment. Then Gertrude returns with info on her latest amazing project. Don't go away. with Gratitude Giving. Today we will be representing an organization called Thistle Farms. They are just phenomenal and I had the opportunity of speaking with a woman who decided to represent them on behalf of Gratitude Giving. Becca Stevens has founded Thistle Farms back in 1997 and this organization provides so many services for women who have been involved in prostitution in the past, trafficking, and even women who have issues with employment. And what this organization offers is not only dental services, therapy needs, but they also provide training and employment opportunities for these women. Thistle Farms is located in Magdalene, California, and they have amazing grounds that allow them to do the services that they do. Thistle Farms actually creates organic products, and it's very quite interesting. 72% um, of the women who are involved in this program have stayed sober for two and a half years after the program. So it's a great thing, a great mission, and there's so many services that they provide besides creating these organic products. These women who live in these residential areas have housing and food provided them, to them as well. Today I'm here with Dr. Shelley Hipsky, and we also have some products here that Thistle Farms sent into us to show our viewers. I was so thrilled. When this arrived in the mail, it was, I was flabbergasted because there's so many amazing products here. Absolutely. And we want to try out some of the products, tell our audience that Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley what they're like so that they can run out and help support those women in need. So Definitely. Let's, you're on first, yes. honey. Try out the, the lip balm, see if you yes, like so it. Yes, so here we actually have Lavender Lip Balm, a product created by the women that work on the Thistle Farms grounds. And I'm just going to sample a little bit here we'll myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. See how it's working? It's good. Okay, now it's very smooth on the lips. I love this feel, and I'm a huge chapstick lip balm fan. So this is definitely something oh, that I would invest cool. in. Yes. Oh, it does have the lavender smell, and that's a very relaxing scent. So yes. I think a lot of aromatherapies or lavender, mm -hmm. a lot of and bubble baths. And that's the therapeutic side of what they do as well. Now, um, this is actually created in Tennessee, but you can order these products online. If you just visit thistlefarms.org, you can awesome. view all of these products. We have gift baskets here. Love it. Yes. Oh, wait, okay. I'm going to try the body balm. Right. Love it. <laughs> not going to lather up too much here, but... Oh, yeah. uh, that's not the consistency I thought it was going to be. It's oh, like yeah. a waxy. Okay, it's almost like a Vaseline. Yeah. But very smooth. Ooh. I'm loving, I'm loving. I'm glistening <laughs> already. I yes. love it. Mm, oh my gosh, smell it, smell it. Oh, oh this is. <laughs> I definitely yeah, you place some orders after this. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and let's look over here. What I loved about these, the little yeah. gift bags, they came with some of these things in here, mm -hmm. but then it also came with a card, and this says, meet one of your seamstresses. So this is a woman who created right. this through a company called Iban, the Fabric of Change, mm -hmm. and it says that our seamstress today was Abina, and she's age 18, and she wants to follow in her grandfather's footsteps and lead her country as a military officer. So, I mean, these are all women serving other women to get to where they need to be in life. Exactly. And become empowered. The, the whole message of what we're delivering here 
on inspiring lives. So, And that's the unique thing about this organization, Shelly, is that when you do purchase these products, you actually get to see who they're benefiting. And it truly makes you feel like you're giving back as well. Awesome. Yes. And they have a shower gel here, a hand lotion. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a, a, wasn't this their best seller? Yes. The geranium the spray? The geranium spray was their best seller this I'm year. I'm girl. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Let it walk. Actually, that's very <laughs> soothing. Oh if my I do gosh. say so. Yes. It is. It's beautiful. I love it. So okay, awesome. They all have amazing scents. Um, we definitely recommend Thistle Farms. They're all organic products as well. Fantastic. Yes. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for sure. finding Thistle Farms and bringing them to our Inspiring Lives audience. And this has been another Gratitude Giving with Jennifer Haynes. Dr. Shelley Hipsky's latest book, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Planet, is inspiring lives around the world. Find your copy at major bookstores and on Amazon.com. And welcome back to Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley. We've been talking today with my New Zealand friend, Gertrude Mache. Her Africa Alive Found Education Foundation is helping children in need. Gertrude has discovered the power of giving, and now she has an exciting new book project that involves some of the world's top motivational and inspirational speakers. So I really want to get into this book. It sounds <laughs> I want my copy. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get my copy signed by you, of awesome. course. Um, but what is, what is this power of giving? I think we both have it ingrained in our own hearts. But, but talk to me about it. Um, I found that the more I give Shelly, the more comes back tenfold. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always come back from the people that I help. True. It comes back through these magical synchronicities <laughs> like this, you know. Yes. Um, and I wanted to write a book to share stories of how other people have given and how that's impacted their lives. Wonderful. And I started interviewing very famous authors in America and put together this book called The Power of Giving, which is coming out in December. Wonderful. Mm. Well, I can't wait to <laughs> see it, but I know that you've like, made these incredible connections with yeah. these famous authors. So let's take a peek at who some of the people that are going to be in the book. Tell us about this. Mark Victor Hansen is one of America's best self-published authors. He wrote the series of books called Chicken Soup of the Soul. Yes. And I met him through a weird series of coincidences. He had just come back from Africa on a safari. And on the last day of his safari, he was invited to go to an orphanage in Kenya, to the largest orphanage in Africa. Wow. And all he did that day was hold the babies. We don't have enough people mm. to give the children physical contact. So we bus in truckloads of tourists, and that's what they do for the day. Aww. And when he came back to the United States, a friend of mine met him, told him that I was writing this self-published book and I needed help. And he told me to fly to LA to meet him. So awesome. he's been an amazing mentor and a coach for me in terms of my book writing. Fantastic. Yeah, he's awesome. Let's see some of the other people that are going to be in your book. Okay, so Jack Canfield was the co-author for Chicken Soup of the Soul with yes. Mark Victor Hansen. So I actually met Jack through Mark. Excellent. And I ended up doing some training and coaching with him. Reverend Michael Beckwith is the reverend for the Agape Spiritual Center mm -hmm. in LA. He was in The Secret. Yes. And again, the synchronicities happened and I got to go to his church in Los Angeles and, and made friends with him. So he's shared some stories in the book as well. Excellent. And then we've got Bob Proctor and Dr. John Demartini. Both of them are also in the movie The Secret. And they also came on board to help share their stories around giving and, and what changed their lives when someone gave to them or when they were giving to someone else. So it's been amazing. I've got some really good stories in the book. Uh, I can't wait to read <laughs> it. i got to check it out. Definitely. Um, and I'm sure my audience is going to want to check it out as well. Yeah, it's going to um, be amazing. So really for me, you know, we're both mothers. We're both, you know, we're on different sides of the world, but we've connected together. And we, we do a lot of this giving. And I think that one of the reasons that we do it, certainly not the only reason, but one of them is to build a legacy. To, to pass on. So what legacy do you, Gertrude, want to leave for future generations of children and your own children? 
I, I know a lot of people live and they live from the premise that they will leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will work all their lives and die and leave a chunk of change to be <laughs> given away to charity. <laughs> I believe in living my legacy. I love it. I want my children to see me in action so they can see the impact that they can have on other people's lives. Yeah. And I do believe that the world's problems are very small. And if we each play a part in solving those problems, we can do some amazing things. So my legacy is to inspire people to take action, to just do a little something. I mean, it could be in your neighborhood. It could be visiting a rest home. It could be taking part in, in a homeless shelter. It's, it's just those small things that make a difference in other people's lives. And if my work in Africa, I, I can see that I am raising the future Nelson Mandela of Africa. Oh. I, I see the scientist will find a cure for AIDS in one of these kids and all I have to do for now is just be a mum for them. I love it. And just allow them to be little children. I love it and I just want to thank the, the marvelous Gertrude Mache. She's an incredible woman. She is a mother for so many. She lives in New Zealand and she helps the women and children of Africa. She is truly a global success story and I am honored not only to have her as a colleague but as a dear friend. Until the next time, I'm Dr. Shelley Hipsky, and remember, inspiration is just a story away. Love you give comes back to you through everything you do. And looking back, the person.